750 bills. I had thousands of line item vetoes. I took line item veto to a new art form. <laughs> a lot of that was billions of dollars worth of spending. A lot of that was legislation that, in my opinion, was just going to add time and money to your and my life. It wasn't going to make us any more healthy. It wasn't going to make us any safer. I vetoed that kind of legislation. How did that all turn out? Um, I would like to think the fact that I got re-elected by a bigger margin the second time than the first time in a state that's two to one Democrat speaks volumes to the fact that people really do appreciate good stewardship of tax dollars. Over this last election cycle, there were three polls, there was a study, there was a study. One of them was the favorability of all the presidential candidates in his or her own state. There is only one presidential candidate viewed favorably in his or her own, in his or her own state, and that was me. And how does that work out? Well, in New Mexico, people wave at me with all five fingers, not just one. <laughs> And then they did a study on job creation. Which presidential candidate had the best record when it came to job creation? Well, that was me. And the response to that was the same response I gave as, New as governor of New Mexico. I didn't create one single job as governor of New Mexico. The private sector creates jobs. <laughs> But because I controlled all the boards and commissions, because I appointed the heads of all the agencies, in essence, I controlled all rules and regulations in New Mexico. And I want to suggest to you that rules and regulations got better on a daily basis, and that getting better was just a root in common sense. If it wasn't going to make us any safer, if it wasn't going to make us any more healthy, if it was just going to add time and money to our lives, why have those rules and regulations? And then lastly, and I think this is really important, the ACLU came out with a report card on all of the presidential candidates last December. ACLU, a group dedicated to the Constitution, a group dedicated to the First Ten Amendments of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, they came out with a report card. 24 Liberty Torches was a perfect score. I think this is really important. Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum had zero Liberty Torches out of 24. <laughs> Mitt Romney had, excuse me, Newt Gingrich had four Liberty Torches out of 24. President Obama had 16 Liberty Torches out of 24. Ron Paul had 18 Liberty Torches out of 24. <laughs> And Gary Johnson had 21 Liberty Torches. So, something that's very, very important in this presidential election is, is that I believe that I am going to be on the ballot in all 50 states. Now, right now, right now, I am on the ballot in 47 states and the District of Columbia. We are litigated in the other three. We believe that we are going to prevail in the other three. But when, what I want to point out here is that there are other candidates for President of the United States, but none of them are going to come close to this 50 ballot access. And that I will come close to this 50 ballot access if not actually achieving uh, getting on the ballot in all 50 states. So there are some big differences between myself and my two opponents. Again, there are other candidates, but none of them come close to 50 state ballot access. So there are some big differences from me and my other two opponents. I'm the only candidate that does not want to bomb Iran.
over a million demonstrators showed up in support of the United States. We bomb Iran, we're going to find ourselves with another hundred million enemies to this country that we would not otherwise have but for our military intervention.
They buy treasuries in a closed loop. It's like Bernie Madoff with a printing machine. It is an inside game. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not inside. Autumn in the Federal Reserve shining light on this inside game. Look, we're all taking it on the chin. We're all taking it on the chin in the name of what? So I'm the only candidate that would uh, sign legislation uh, repealing legal tender laws allowing for competing currency. <laughs> so a word about my opponent, Mitt Romney. <laughs> I guess he's supposed to be a smart guy, but he says a couple of things. One thing he says is that it's a no-brainer to build a fence across the border. Can't afford it. You are looking at someone here who has not one molecule of brain based on that statement. That would be a ridiculous thing to do, would be to build a fence across the border. Mitt Romney says that we should balance the federal budget, but that we should hold Medicare intact, and that we should increase our spending for defense. We all finished the second grade, and there was a mathematics competency that went along with graduating from the second grade. It doesn't add up. This is what we're supposed to believe in. We're having a debate in this country right now over who's going to spend more money, the Democrats or the Republicans, on Medicare, when we have to cut Medicare spending. We have to. And yet the discussion is who's going to spend more money. The alternative is no health care for those over 65. The alternative, Medicaid, is no health care for those that are poor. Barack Obama, I have to tell you, when it comes to his violin and the words that come out of his violin, it is music. Everything that he says, I think, is terrific. When he ran for election, when he talked about gay issues, I thought, we're going to move ahead in this area. When he talked about our military interventions and ending this state of constant war, I really believed him. And when he talked about the drug war, and when he made the explicit promise to not raid medical marijuana facilities with federal government money in states where legislator, legislatures or citizens voted to implement these programs, and right now flying in the face of that by raiding medical marijuana facilities in Colorado and California, nothing matches up with the words. The words are terrific. The words are terrific, but the reality behind them are absolutely non-existent. I don't think we could be at more of a crossroads in this country right now. The notion of wasted vote. What, what is a more wasted vote than voting for somebody that you don't believe in? Both 
parties have their hands out to sell loopholes, and individuals, groups, and corporations pay for those loopholes. I am the only candidate that is promising to advocate on the part of eliminating the income tax, corporate tax, abolishing the IRS, and replacing all of that with one federal consumption tax that I'm going to argue at its root will be much, much, much better than what we currently have. I think it's the answer when it comes to American exports that we're going to bleed all existing non-transparent tax out of all goods and services. It's the answer to making our goods and services 23% more competitive when it comes to export. It's the answer when it comes to China. It's really the answer when it comes to jobs because in a zero corporate tax rate environment, if the private sector doesn't create tens of millions of jobs, I don't know what it's going to take to create tens of millions of jobs. And this is kicking crony capitalism in the rear end because there'll be no more tax deductions. Issuing pink slips, adopt the fair tax. We're talking about pink slips to half of Washington lobbyists because Woo! that's why they're there. Thank you very, very much.